Are you struggling to figure out which white ink to use on your dark shirts? Hey, it's Jennifer with Pigskins and Pigtails. I am an at-home crafter who loves to screen print using my vinyl cutter. I love this process so much that I have taught thousands of crafters how to make better quality shirts using their vinyl cutting machine through my online classes, in-person events, and right here on YouTube. Today I'm going to give you the scoop on various white screen printing inks to help you decide which one is best for your next project. This is an update to a video I made three years ago where I compared two of these white inks. In this video, I'm going to compare five. First, let's look at the types of inks I'm comparing. Then I'll show you my process for printing with them. And after that, I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the final results. I must start by saying I'm a fan of water-based ink. I love the ease of cleanup since I'm screen printing here in my home. Plus, these inks come in smaller jars, which are perfect for beginners wanting to try it out before investing in a large amount of ink. My two favorite brands for water-based ink are Speedball and Green Galaxy. Speedball has three different types of white inks, the original fabric ink, this opaque pearl, and their newest line of Flex ink. I also use Green Galaxy's Comet White. I'm gonna compare these four different white ink options. I'm also gonna add in a white Plastisol ink so you can see how it compares to water-based inks. Just remember, Plastisol ink requires a different cleanup process. You don't wanna wash this down your sink. If the ink alone was the only factor in how your prints turned out on dark fabrics, I'd be able to cut to the chase and show you examples right now. But there are other factors in play. Your method of screen printing and the type of blank shirt you use is gonna be almost as important as the ink formula itself. To help you choose the best white ink, it's important that you not only know the different ink brands to try, but also how printing them will determine your final outcome. For the best result when screen printing, it's important to use high quality blank t-shirts. All of my prints today are gonna be on black Bella Canvas 3001 style shirts. These are not only great for screen printing, but they're my favorite fit to wear. This style is 100% cotton, so keep that in mind as you watch the results. You can expect similar results with Bella Canvas's CVC and Tri-Blend styles as well. If you're a beginner, maybe you picked up one of the kits I developed with Speedball, you're likely starting out printing on your table in your craft room, kitchen, or maybe your garage. This is how I got started, and there's nothing wrong with a very basic setup like this. Just place your screen directly on top of your t-shirt. I'm gonna start by showing you how all of the inks look when printed on my table. Then I'm gonna share how the same inks look when printed using my screen printing press. In this frame, I'm using the regular white Speedball ink. In this frame, I'm using Speedball's opaque pearl. In this frame, I'm using Speedball's new Flex Alpine white ink. And in this corner, I'm using Green Galaxy's Comet white ink. I'm gonna squeegee from the top of my screen using firm pressure. I'm gonna repeat this starting from the top of the screen each time. Usually two to four times is the right amount for me, but it takes a little bit of experimenting to get the right balance of ink. For this test, I did each one with just three passes. And now for the fun part, lift the screen to reveal your printed design. From a distance, these all look great. My process from here would be to let the ink air dry and then heat press it according to each brand's instructions. The heat cures the ink and these shirts are ready to go. So let's get a close-up comparison of how each of these inks look when they're done. This is the Speedball regular white ink. Pretty even coverage with just a little bit of the shirt color showing through. The opaque pearl ink is a thinner consistency and the print has a little more transparency. Sometimes you can even notice the shimmer in the ink. The Alpine White Flex ink looks almost identical to the regular white print. And Comet White is similar, but shows a little more of the shirt's texture. These are all pretty good and very similar in that you can see a little of the shirt color coming through the ink. So what do we do if we wanna get a brighter white? This is where a screen printing press comes in handy. This little piece of equipment was a game changer for me. I have links to more details about the screen printing press below, and just as a side note, I don't recommend using a wood frame on this particular press, but I'm gonna be careful to make it work for this video. I'm gonna do the same comparison of all four inks, but this time using the press. I've loaded my Bella Canvas shirts on the press, one for each type of ink, and I'm gonna squeegee over the design. I repeat this two more times and then lift the screen. The results should look very similar to what we saw when printing on the table. Because we're using a press this time, here's the secret. 
I can use a heat gun to quickly dry this first layer of ink. I go over it about 30 to 45 seconds, covering the entire area until it's dry to the touch. Now I can lower the screen back down and the press is gonna make sure it's lined up perfectly. Squeegee another coat or two of ink over the design, and this is gonna build up another layer of ink on top. When you lift the screen, you're gonna notice a much brighter white solid print. I'm gonna show you how these compare to the first set of shirts that I made, but first I wanna add into my comparison the Effin ink, which is the Plastisol ink. This is a thicker consistency, so having a firm squeegee is important. I'm using the same process as before so you can see how this compares. This ink does not air dry. In fact, it will stay wet until you add heat. Most screen printers will use a flash dryer or a large conveyor dryer, but if you're just getting started, you can also use a heat gun and a heat press. After drying and curing the ink on all of the shirts, here are my opinions on the final results of five different white inks. Here's a look at Speedball's regular white fabric ink. On the left is the one I printed on the table, on the right is printed on the screen printing press, and after the first coat of ink, I dried the ink and then added another coat on top. You can see how much brighter of a white you get when you use the press to dry between coats. The regular white ink feels a little rougher on the shirt compared to the feel of the other inks. And what I discovered is that if you tug at the shirt once the ink is dry, you can use this ink to create a vintage worn look. You can even get different aged looks for this shirt, I used just one squeegee of ink on the table, and I intentionally didn't press hard with my squeegee, and you can see how the design didn't print as dark around the edges. I think this is a neat look, and as the shirt gets washed, it will enhance this look even more. Here's a shirt I printed several years ago that I've washed many times. This is a really popular look and easiest to achieve with Speedball's white ink. Now let's take a look at the shirts printed with Speedball opaque pearl fabric ink. This ink is a much thinner consistency compared to the other white inks and has a little shimmer quality to it. On the left is the one I printed on the table and on the right is printed on the press, drying and layering the ink. Again, you can see how much brighter the ink gets when you use the press to dry between coats. Out of all of the inks, this print is the softest, especially if you don't dry and layer the ink. On this one that I printed on the table, you can barely feel the ink. This reminds me of the look you can get with a discharge ink or bleached look, especially if you squeegee over it just one or two times instead of three times. I love using this ink when I'm printing on Bella Canvas tri-blend shirts because the print matches the soft feel of the shirts. It doesn't leave a stiff texture. Here's a look at Speedball's newest screen printing ink called Flex Ink. On the left is the one I printed on the table. On the right is the one printed on the press drying between coats. This one also gets so much brighter with that second coat of ink. This Flex ink is designed not to crack or look distressed, so it's perfect for getting a solid coverage. And to get the best results, I like to use my press with this ink so that I can get the brightest white. One important thing to note with this ink is that Speedball does not recommend using a heat gun to speed up the drying time. When I dry the ink between coats, I turn my heat gun temperature all the way down. Then you wanna allow it to air dry for at least 24 hours before doing the final heat press to cure the ink. This is a brand I've used for years and is my go-to for a bright white ink. On the left is one I printed on the table. On the right is printed on the press, drying and adding another coat of ink. The results of this ink are very similar to Speedball's Flex ink. The big difference is that I can use my heat gun to dry the ink and heat press this shirt right away. They also make a low cure additive for this ink. When I add this warp drive to Comet ink when I'm printing, it lowers the curing temperature. This is really helpful with a shirt that contains polyester, where you might normally see something called dye migration happen when you heat set the ink. The quick turnaround time and lower curing option is a benefit of using this ink. And lastly, let's take a look at a shirt printed with Plastisol ink. Unlike water-based ink, Plastisol does not soak into the fabric, but the print adheres on top of the fabric. On the left is the one I printed on the table. You don't really get the full benefit of using Plastisol ink when screen printing on a table. I can get the same look with one of the water-based inks, so I probably won't print with Plastisol on my table. The results on the press are much better. The ink covers the shirt very similar to the previous two inks, which were water-based. It's definitely a solid white coverage that feels a little thicker on the shirt. It stretches nicely and doesn't crack. If you're looking at a screen printed shirt in a store, it's probably printed using Plastisol ink. This is the ink choice for most large screen printing shops. 
The fact that the ink doesn't air dry allows shops to print large quantities and even leave the ink on the screen to print another day. If we put the Plastisol ink next to the Speedball, Flex, and Comet White, all of these printed on the press, you'll see that there isn't a significant difference. As an at-home screen printer, the cleanup process and turnaround time of washing out my screens is a big factor for me. I typically print smaller batches of shirts and I wanna be able to clean out my screen quickly and use it for another project. For this reason, water-based inks are my choice for almost all of my projects. So just to recap the four different looks you can get with white ink. For a vintage aged look, I will use Speedball regular white fabric ink and print just one to three squeegees over the design. This can be done with or without a screen printing press because I don't dry the ink between layers. I will intentionally press lighter on my squeegee so that the design is faded in some areas. When I want a soft print, I will use Speedball's opaque pearl ink. I prefer one to three squeegees of this ink and I don't layer on another coat. So again, this one can be done with or without a screen printing press since there's no drying step. This leaves the ink very soft and almost a bleached look to it with some of the color of the shirt showing through. For a bright, solid white coverage, I will use the Speedball Flex Alpine White ink or Green Galaxy Comet White. I will use my screen printing press to layer the ink and dry between coats. When choosing between these two inks for a project, I'll consider how much time I have for drying and curing. Whether you want the look of an aged vintage print, a soft washed out white, or a bright white, you can achieve all of these looks just based on the ink you choose and the process that you screen print with. If getting a bright solid white coverage is something you wanna achieve, check out the link below for tips on choosing a beginner screen printing press that's perfect for a home setup. I have links to all the inks and supplies I use in this video in the description below. I hope this comparison helps you decide which ink to grab for your next project. The subscribe button to follow along for more screen printing tips and tricks.